is so nice to see so many of your faces, some of whom I haven't seen in, in almost two years. And I have to say, luckily you're aging gracefully and you look terrific. So this is really wonderful and, and energizing and inspiring for me. I'm so appreciative of what the wise men do, um, all the efforts and the energy that go into this annual tradition of our photo exhibition, whereby you include participants from the Westport Center for Senior Activities. Believe it or not, we've been at this for 18 years, which is uh, hard to believe, but I have to say, it's one of my top five events of the year. So I really, really look forward to this event. And I'm hoping, as I said to Sal and Hal, I'm hoping that come the springtime, we can kind of redo what we're gonna go through today and do an in-house celebration with a reception. So that's my goal. And I'm sorry, I, we're just not comfortable doing that at this point, but as things continue to move in the right direction, I'm optimistic that we can bring you all in and walk up and down the hallways together come the springtime. So I purposely did not look at the walls when I walked the hallway this morning. Um, I wanna be surprised as you all are going to be with the beautiful photog photographs that have been put up. Um, I wanna thank Hal particularly for all of his efforts and countless hours and Sal and all of the Wise Men Camera Club members who are with us today and who have made this event um, really, really enjoyable and pleasurable for the community. And it often brings in a lot of community members to our center. So I wanna thank the participants, the photographers, the judges, um, thank you, Jason, for helping with the technology. And I am looking forward to sitting back and enjoying my show. I'm not sure where I'm going because I'm assuming many of you didn't travel the world. Um, but nevertheless, I know it's going to be beautiful. So thank you, everyone, for your efforts. And I do look forward to seeing you in-house soon. Thank you. Thank you, Sue, and all your, we really appreciate your support. Thank you. No problem. Hal? I guess I'm up. Okay. So on behalf of the Wiseman's Camera Club, I want to welcome everyone to the club's Expo 18 awards event, uh, which is obviously being hosted by the Westport Senior Center today. And I want to thank Sue Fister, Holly Betts, Jason Wilson, and all the other members of the Senior Center staff for all their help with our yearly contest. And I just want to make a remark or two additional remarks or two. A number of years ago, Bill Walsh and Larry Untermeyer arranged with Sue Fister to provide our club with the opportunity uh, to have our expo contests here at the Senior Center and then display all of the winning photos and other submissions to the contest on the walls of the main hallway in the center. It's a truly unique opportunity for us as amateur photographers to have a place to display our work. And we truly appreciate what Sue and her staff have done for us. It, it, it provides an additional incentive to go out and take pictures, which is the purpose, one of the main purposes of the camera club. And it's, it's great when you can put your pictures up and the public can see the images and you can feel good about that. So thank you very much, Sue. We really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, Hal, and uh, you're, I want to echo what you just said, and that is the purpose of the club, and that's to encourage our members to take pictures and improve both the photographic and digital darkroom skills that they need to get these photos. So uh, I think uh, it, it really is a tremendous incentive to go out and shoot. I know it, it, it uh, gives me some incentive, and I believe it, it really does incent uh, a lot of the members of the club to go out. So thank you very much. All right, my, my responsibility now is just to talk about the rules, um, give an idea of who participated. So um, the eligibility, wise men members and spouses and active senior center participants. And I think we have a good group, uh, a variety, a diversity of people who have participated in this. Uh, um, uh, we allowed each uh, participant to submit four photos um, per, per, uh, per entrant. Uh, and many, many uh, photographers did give us four, some gave three and some gave one. We wound up with 22 uh, two amateurs presenting photos. 
that's uh, one down from last year. And actually, given all the issues uh, with COVID and everything else, I think that's not a bad participation level. We had to cut back our ca categories from nine to seven. Uh, we dropped action, motion, and black and white because we just didn't have enough submissions that would be categorized in those two uh, categories. Uh, we have five architectural photos. We have 13 critter photos, 12 general, eight landscape, 12 nature, eight portrait, and 16 waterscape. Waterscapes was very popular this year. We had a total of 74 photos. Uh, last year, we had 97. So we're down quite a few and we hopefully we can do better next year. Uh, but we do have a good diversity of photos and subjects, et cetera. So it's gonna be a lot of fun to take a look at these. We additionally had uh, six photos from uh, three prof uh, two professionals uh, and they, but they weren't judged in the competition. Uh, the judging method was three judges. That was Miggs Burroughs, Dave Pressler, and Ted Horowitz. The, when they were judging, they only saw the titles and the photographer was not disclosed. So they did not know who the photographer was. They scored in a range of five to nine points for each photo. And they, we took their, um, their score independently. Uh, we did, we, so that they didn't discuss what their score was in the first round. The ties, however, were broken by a consensus of the three judges. So if we had a tie for first place, we had the judges discuss um, which photo that they felt should be first place. Same thing with second. If we had more than one photo that had the, the second, uh, largest uh, points, number of points. Um, we, we chose a first and second place for each category. And then the judge, judges chose best in show by consensus from the first place winners. So we, we laid out the first place winners and they had a discussion and uh, by consensus chose which photo would be considered uh, the, the uh, best in show. We have five honorable mention photographers and their photographs were chosen, chosen from the highest scores, uh, excluding uh, first and second place winners. So if someone uh, had a first or second place photo, uh, they were excluded from honorable mention. Uh, and we'll go through, hopefully we'll go through all of these photos. I think we, we can get through them in a fairly decent amount of time. Okay, uh, Hal, do you want to just mention a little bit about the judges? I've mentioned. Okay, I will be glad to do that. We had um, three very well-known professional photographers from our area do the judging. Uh, as you already mentioned, Sal, we had Miggs Burroughs, Dave Pressler, and Ted Horowitz. So Miggs is a well, I, I have this very nicely written out thing for me. Um, Miggs is a well-known and uh, loved lifelong resident of Westport. He is a full-time graphic artist and has designed hundreds of logos, ads, brochures, and websites for clients throughout the Fairfield County. And um, as a matter of fact, one of his one of his uh, his uh, website uh, not website, but one of his graphic graphic uh, presentations was at the at the um, the YMCA when they were doing the construction, all of the all of the fencing was hidden by his artwork, and it was very very pleasant being able not to have to see the work being done. Then we had Dave Pressler. He's a world traveling professor, uh, professional photographer, visual artist, and designer, and a Wise Men's uh, Camera Club member. And he does have a studio in Fairfield, and if you want to ever go up there and take a look at some of his beautiful work in the, uh, and, and the work of his um, uh, partners in that uh, venture. It's in Fairfield and it's really worth going and seeing. And lastly, it's Ted Horowitz, my good friend. 
a professional photographer, creative location photographer for hundreds of international Fortune 500 clients and members of the, and he's also a member of the Wise Men's Camera Club. And we really thank them for their effort. Uh, they they uh, come in, they've come in every year for the last couple of years and spent a few hours going over the photographs with us. And it's, uh, it, it's really a pleasure to have them do this for us. And we thank them very much. Sal. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to give Dave Pressler a little bit of an ad. Uh, the Art Place Gallery in yes. Fairfield is having its 40th anniversary uh, and a, a celebration on, on Sunday, November 7th uh, from 2 to 5 p.m. So uh, if you want to go, I think everybody's invited. Dave, is that OK? Absolutely. Um, we'd be delighted uh, to have visitors. Um, we're near the train station on Sanford Street in association with the Fairfield Theater Company. And um, Art Place Gallery has uh, been functioning as an artist cooperative since 1981. So you will see a broad spectrum of artwork and artists will be on site to answer questions and talk about their work and there will be some refreshments safely served, I might add. Great. And, and thank you for your participation in the club, Dave, and your, your, uh, your judging. Okay, so um, I'm gonna show the photos. First, uh, honorable mentions, and then the I'm gonna do second and first place in each category, uh, the seven categories. Uh, if the photographer is uh, has joined us, I'd love for them to comment about the photo. Uh, and I think Dave, you're the only judge actually that's uh, that's with us right now, is that correct? It looks like it. I don't recognize any other judges on screen. Right. So if, if you have any comments as well, uh, that would be uh, very nice. Let's, let's keep it kind of brief, uh, but let, let's take a good look at each photo and uh, have some fun talking about them. All right, so I'm ready to share my screen, Jason. So these are the, their five honorable mentions. I'm gonna go into full screen mode here. All right, uh, this is Leopard in a Tree by Greg Battersley. That's quite a shot. Greg, are you on? Guess not. And this is Royal Turn, taken by Warren Yan. Next is Campo Sky, Steve Rothenberg. Steve, are you with us? I am, I am. Yeah, you wanna make a, a comment? Uh, just a magnificent night at Campo Beach. We've been going there a lot during the summer and the sky was incredible. You know, it was just beautiful colors. And um, this was with an iPhone. I took this with my iPhone. Wow. Yeah. Well, and um, it's worth mentioning. Everybody, we... the people were lining up where we were sitting on the South Beach of Campo taking pictures. I mean, it was just magnificent. It was just yeah. one of those magical moments. Uh, we dropped the uh, separate category this year for, uh, uh, for smartphones because it's really hard to take, tell the difference between a smartphone and, and a DSLR. Uh, we did it initially just to encourage people who were taking pictures with smartphones to join. But now this this hard to uh, make to, to de determine uh, which one, which is a smartphone and which isn't. So, yeah, I, I you know I always have the smartphone with me, but I don't always have my camera with me. That's the you know accessibility. That's the thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, next is do on a leaf. This is my photo. 
Uh, and it was just uh, you know something that caught my eye one morning up in New Hampshire. And I just love the reflections uh, off these uh, dew drops on this leaf. And finally, we have Reflections Water Lily by Steve Shadroff. Yes, uh, first of all, thank you, Hal. Thank you, Sal. Thanks to the judges. And Susan, thanks for your comments, uh, especially about aging gracefully. I appreciate that. Um, How do you know uh, she's this, talking about you? Well, <laughs> she probably wasn't in all honesty. She was just being gracious. So I, I'm appreciating her graciousness. Uh, um, the, we a number of years ago, my wife and I had gone to up to the botanical gardens and um, they had these lovely water lilies uh, in a variety of uh, a variety of settings. And this one just absolutely caught my eye and just the just the beauty and grace of the lily and its incredible reflection in the water. Uh, that is something that the whole aspect of, of reflections in water, it's something that I've always been captivated by. So this is something, this is a shot that really touches my heart. So uh, thank you. Yeah, it's a lovely composition. Thank you. Okay, now we can go to the categories. <sighs> if I can get out of this, let me get into the categories. First, architecture. All right, I'm gonna give second place first and then first place. This is a Roman amphitheater in Arles, France. Linda Woodruff. Linda, are you on by any chance? No. <laughs> I like this little guy here drinking whatever he's drinking. Too bad we can't make it bigger. It's okay. It's all right. That'd be my picture anyway. Are you you on the on the on this uh, call, Linda? No, no, it's okay, Sal. So you can go ahead. Okay. And first place uh, in architecture is Saugatuck 2021. This is a black and white from uh, Mike Guffman. And I think that's right under Route 95 in Saugatuck. In the critter category, We've seen this photo a little bit already. Uh, this is, is everybody happy by Linda Kalt. Lydia, I'm sorry, Lydia Kalt. Lydia, are you on the call? No, Lydia is in here right now. She's babysitting, but oh, uh, this okay. is Dick. I, I will tell you though that uh, uh, she she got quite a kick out of this because uh, the of the three dog, the dog at the top, Phoebe is ours, and she is the uh, she is the aunt, if you will, to the other two dogs. Uh -huh. And they and, and when they come over for a visit, for a visit, they drive her crazy. And this was a moment that said it all. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But thank so, you for the recognition. Yep. First so, place, is, down the, the navigator down. there, so we can see the whole photo. Yep. Can you see the whole photo? Yeah, can you go no. full screen no. though? No, uh, your uh, yeah. Lightroom left uh, is interfering. I'm seeing full screen. Your navigator is showing on the left, Sal. There we yeah. go. There we go. You got Perfect. It. Yeah. Okay, That's I, didn't, I didn't do Dick, anything. Okay. Dick, we felt that this photo was charming and um, we, uh, we just, you know, taken by the interaction between the little dogs and the viewers, us, and fell in love with it. So your wife did a beautiful job and um, I'm sure she pursued it doggedly. <laughs> Very good. Well, she, 
you know, we love the we love these girls and uh, and they're they're just wonderful. And she took it with an iPhone, but it just goes to show you what technology has developed because you should pardon the pun. Uh, but it was a, it was a wonderful moment. And I'm glad you liked it. Oh, she'll be very excited. Next photo is Mr. Locust. Happy 17th birthday. Uh, Chuck Greenlee, first place in Critter. Chuck, where'd you get this guy? I don't think he's on. He was on. Chuck, if you're uh, here, you have he, to unmute yourself. He's having trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, here we go. There it goes. Well, well there as my you. wife said, this might be the only time we ever see one of these in our lifetime. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, it was, you know, we were outside and uh, doing doing some picking up and that, and uh, I looked down and uh, crawling up my leg was this little guy that had just hatched. You can see the, the wing on our right side uh, was uh, just still kind of drying out and expanding. Uh, they, they uh, we heard a couple of them. I don't know whether you guys did too this summer, but uh, they uh, they were few and far between. And uh, I really can't remember 17 years ago what they were like, but I remember them being a little noisier than this. But uh, uh, I don't think we ever saw the real live guy fully developed. But uh, we we heard a couple in the in the woods around us. But uh, it was just a, an iPhone shot. Yep. And you caught it in development. That's interesting. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, I, I was a little concerned about the quality of the picture, but this was an iPhone, and uh, you know it. it it uh, on my work glove is what it was on. So a couple of people had asked me that, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, ama just amazing. iPhone 12, this was uh, the, the the real detail that you can get. Chuck, you could sell this photo to some of these um, restaurants that are featuring insects, high in protein and low in fat. Well, we tried cooking this guy, Dave, and uh, it really wasn't that tasty. <laughs> Take it to Myanmar, where they, or Canada. yeah, I yeah. guess it's amazing. There's more uh, more insects being uh, eaten here in some of the specialty restaurants than ever before. Well, they say it's they coming. Coated. What's he looking at? Well, now thank the you. Gen general category. Is that full screen for you all? No. No. Uh, it is for me. Mm. There it is. Okay. I think it just takes some time to do it, to come up. All right. In the general character uh, 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 category, this is through the car wash, oh. <laughs> taken by Karen Weingarten. Karen, are you on by any chance? Wow. Yeah. Cool. And they said they yeah. might not a, a, attend, but uh, we're going to try to. So, uh, cool. isn't that upside down? <laughs> oh, no, no, it is correct the way you see it. It's pressing the yeah. spray, it's going up. That's cool. And frankly, we had a debate during the, the judging about this. Uh, she has um, oriented it this way, which we, we have decided is absolutely correct. I think the, the lines that you see going across are, are the brush marks. Yes. On a windshield. On a windshield, right. And first place is Need a Spare, also by Karen, Karen Weingarten. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe she had surgery this week. That's why she's not on. Okay. Hope she has done well with that. What's the category? All right. Next is, is landscape, a landscape category. We're still getting your navigator showing yeah, up. Yeah, you got to get the navigator out of the way, Sal. That's it. Now it's better. All right. It seems like, oh, okay, never mind. I won't get involved with that. Okay. So uh, this is Serenity by Ed Simic. Ed, are you with us? Yes, I am. Um, 
this is a, a, a shot that I took purely by accident. I one day took uh, a ride up the small road between Greens Farms train station and Greens Farms Academy, uh, back behind the academy. And I just rode around and this thing caught my eye and I passed it and I came back and I said, I love the way there are almost levels in here. You have a bridge and then you've got the little shack in the back then you've got another shack then you've got the house behind it. Uh, and I just, and all the green, it just, it just caught my eye. Great, Ed. It's a lovely place. Beautiful. And first place in landscape is uh, December 31st, 20, Sunrise Over Saugatuck by Jean-Pierre Montelier. Yes, and uh, you, we can thank uh, my dentist because I had an emergency dental care that morning and from his office over the Saugatuck, this was sure. a view. So cost me a lot of money for that shot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, JP. I guess you didn't have that kind of toothache then. Dr. Freeman, <laughs> by the way. Dr. Adam. Yeah, Dr. Freeman. <laughs> you want to go to his office? I get the <laughs> It wasn't the root of all evil. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, Did have dumb. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next is the category nature. You full screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And this is Birds in Flight by Greg Battersby. Greg, are you on? I think he was the leopard. Susan. Susan. And first place. Uh, is Birchwood by Michael Hehenberger. Michael, you're on. Yeah, the, this is a, a piece of uh, Birchwood in, in Sweden. So you see it's, um, it's a lot of uh, trees next to each other. But I was thinking about asking uh, some professional to help me eliminate the road and the road sign in the back, but uh, maybe it doesn't hurt so much. Yep. It caught a lot of the judge's eye for sure. Michael, it's very interesting. Your eye goes back into that um, landscape and moves around and it's just very uh, captivating. You, you don't think that the road is distract, distracting too much? Not really. I think the verticality of the um, trees uh, and the fact that the black marks on the um, trunks keep your eye moving all around. And um, I think you just can ignore the background for the most part. Also, you have two signs. so one for the right eye, one for the left eye. So it's very well balanced. <laughs> okay. But it was taken with a, also with a smartphone. Next is uh, the category is portrait. And this is called Hear the Beat by Greg Battersby. You got the navigator still up there, so. Okay. Is it gone? Yes, you're good. Okay, I have to swipe the my cursor across the screen and then evidently you see more, okay. Hear the beat. Next is COVID Embrace by Mike Guffman. First place in portrait. The judges felt this was a very powerful statement at this time in our history with the pandemic. And um, it's well uh, balanced in terms of composition. 
and there's a lot of emotion uh, in this image. There's love, there's caring, and that just says a lot. It's an interesting photo. Certainly captures the moment, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And the last category is waterscape. We full. And this is um, second place, Bridge to Nowhere by June Whitaker. Talk. I think we can, uh, most of us know where this is, right? Right behind Rye Ridge Deli. Yep. <laughs> so you want to say something about it? Yes. Um, I've lived in Westport for many, many, many years and never knew of this bridge. And then one day started, you know, did a lot of walking during pandemic time and took a walk. And to my surprise, I saw this beautiful, <laughs> beautiful bridge and um, unbelievable that I have not seen it in all these years. So you can walk through Westport all the time and find something new to photograph. And I really enjoyed the, uh, the view. <laughs> yeah, and what did you take this with, June? An iPhone. Yep. Mm -hmm. We felt this was beautifully executed, very crisp, good texture, and brought your eye right back into the uh, uh, subject matter. Uh, just a beautiful, crisp photo. And uh, you're absolutely right. When you look around, you discover new things. Yes. <laughs> Lovely. And this is first place in Waterscape, foggy morning at Campo. And this is Jean-Pierre Montelier again. It's the judge telling you that. Yeah, this was a uh, lucky morning. I mean, it was beautiful. Um, I had my iPhone. I mean, I only take iPhone pictures unless it's a bird or an animal. And uh, it was just uh, just beautiful, beautiful. Slightly misty. The, the fog was lifting up. The, the boat was actually in the fog. The houses were in the fog. So... Again, you never know when the moment is going to show up, but uh, you have to capture it. That's why the iPhone is so great. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, what is interesting, I think you were getting to it, you alluded to it, maybe your voice was broken up, is how crisp and out of the fog the, the boat is, the sailboat. Yes. And the fog in the back. Yeah, yeah. You really captured a moment there. It's great. Yeah, I had a couple of them. The other one was, if you know the... Uh, the area, there are a couple of uh, buoys, a green one and a red one, uh, showing the channel. And th there was the same thing. The buoy was bright red and the fog was in the background. But I thought this one was, was nicer. Yeah, well, thank you. Very nice. Thank Very you. Very nicely done, JP. Thank you. And the first place winner is this one, COVID Embrace. And I think that what was very attractive about this is what David emphasized, which is the emotion and the, the composition. Are you showing this? This is, this is, this is the is best. Best in show, I'm sorry. Show. Best in show right. is COVID Embrace, Mike Guthman. Yeah, Mike could, couldn't join us today. So those are all of the uh, winners uh, in the various categories. And if there's interest, uh, we could quickly go through all of the photos in each uh, category. Um, and uh, we, we can do that fairly rapidly. Is there interest in doing that? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. And here's architecture.
Uh, can you scan through them without having the uh, navigator? The Lightroom yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, move your cursor. Good. Are you are you full screen now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is Arches by Steve Shadroff. Yeah, this was this was up at the near the Clark Art Institute in um, William, Williamstown, Mass, and uh, taken a few years ago, and it just caught my eye. I had, to, I had tried to get as low as to the ground as I could in order to get that perspective on, underneath the arches, so I thought it was an interesting shot. Thank you. That's great. That's alma, my alma mater. Next is, we've seen this already, the Roman Amphitheater, Linda Woodruff. You didn't get it? Oh, Marty. I did video. It was, oh, I saw the Marty. seconds clicking off. Well, then what? Okay. And this is Mike Guthman's Saugatuck 2021. We've talked about that. And this is called Optical or Illusion, June Whitaker. June, you are here, right? No? Yes, so. yes, yes, I'm, I'm here. here. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes. Do you want to say something? Uh, yeah, this was taken at um, uh, Kent Falls in Kent, Connecticut. And um, it amazed me when it was um, developed that it, <laughs> that it looked like this because when I was photographing it, I did not see it like that. <laughs> On a slant. On a slant, you know, that that, that illusion. Uh, and when I, it was developed, I said, wow, <laughs> this is different. Right. Yeah. We knew that you were on the straight and narrow because there's a sign to the left that says no alcoholic beverages. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Grassy Brook Farm, Holly Betts. Holly, are you on the call? Oh, so they're showing all the pictures. Uh, yes, I am. It's kind of blurry, but yeah, uh, that's uh, Brookline, Vermont, a very small town north of Brattleboro and was my uh, grandfather's homestead. Wow, your grandfather's homestead. Yes. Yeah, your file must be kind of small. That's why it came out yeah. this way. Sorry, it's blurry on my That's screen okay. as well. Looks better in person. <laughs> okay, that's everybody in architecture. Critter. We talked about this one. This is Leopard in a Tree, Greg Battersby. This is um, our Pablo, Holly. Uh, that's Block Island, Rhode Island. Okay. This is uh, uh, yours as well, Saugatuck River Blue. Yeah, that was taken on the point uh, behind the Levitt on a beautiful uh, spring day. Uh-huh. Okay, I believe this is Hal. This is yours, right? That's mine. Dragonfly in Meadow. I've never that's seen, up at, never seen that's one. Up at the, that's up at the reservoir uh, on on route on route uh, fifty eight, and that photograph was taken with a three hundred millimeter lens, and um, at at about a, and it shows there at 195 millimeters. And so that's very far away. And that's, uh, I, I just thought it was an interesting picture. Yeah, you held it steady. And that's in the same place. That's a, uh, there's this, there's a pond on one side of the reservoir and there's a lot of wildlife and insects and all kinds of stuff. And this wading bird was there. I thought it was just a nice image. All right, great blue heron. And this is yours as well. 
Yeah, that's that's a, one of my favorite shots of the, um, that's a red-tailed hawk and that's at Sherwood Island and it was up in the tree where they normally have uh, the bird feeders and uh, this bird is always there and he scares away all the small birds when he comes and lands. And we talked about this, Chuck. And this is pollinator pathway, I think. This is Steve Rothenberg. Yes, you know, backyard picture, and uh, just an interesting looking butterfly. There's Greenlee. Hmm? So oh. it's Greenlee, Chuck Greenlee on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's a different picture. No, that was different, right? And this is a royal turn. This is Warren's. He really caught this one. Beautiful. Certainly. Very did. sharp. Warren, are you with us by any chance? I don't think he's here. Oh, okay. <laughs> and this is my camel friend, Lydia. Lydia yeah, Paul. she um, she took this. Uh, actually, this was uh, I think she used a cannon for this one. This is um, in the city of David, overlooking Jerusalem, and um, she and my daughter had just taken a ride with uh, with uh, George here, and uh, he was uh, he was relaxing, and I uh, I thought it was a great photo, and I told her I said you got to catch this. And what I'm amazed by is you look at his legs and they are 180 degree folded. And uh, this, uh, this, this poor guy probably works 18 hours a day, but uh, it was a moment that uh, I really enjoyed. I'm glad she took it. Yeah. Have you ever ridden one of these camels? I have. She did. Um, well, wait a minute. Yeah, I rode the camel that day too. Yeah, it was. A, but I'll tell you, this was a... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. It was a spectacular day because the the overview of Jerusalem from that location is incredible, and uh, and uh, so we we're glad we got this moment. Yeah, when they you may recall this when they get up, they go hind feet first, so they throw you forward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I seem to recall that. <laughs> You're not sure you're going to make it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then uh, this is, uh, is These everybody are our kids. happy? Yep. We've talked about this one. Yep. And Jean-Pierre, this is yours, a Quetzal, mythical bird of Aztecs and Mayans. It's not easy to, to catch these, is it? JP, you're, you're muted. Yes, uh, this was in Costa Rica last April, and uh, we were at almost 9,000 feet in the uh, center of Costa Rica. And uh, we met this farmer who brought us straight to the nest. And so that's a male uh, who was posing, right? It was just amazing. For one hour, we just took pictures. Uh, and the colors are different on his back than from his belly. So it's, uh, it's a small bird, you know, it's, uh, the bird itself is maybe six inches, maybe really? a little more, 10 inches. Yeah. The tail, of course, is what's very long. And the interesting part is that in the olden days, uh, it was a protected, it was a sacred bird. If you killed one of those birds, you would be killed. But the what's, mind, the, what's the bird? It's the uh, Quetzal. It is a Quetzal, yeah. Quetzal, yeah. Yeah. And oh, we yep. got that's my the, picture. That's the, the other butterfly. Yep. So that was in my backyard. It was just an interesting looking butterfly. The swallowtail. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, my shot. Um, it was taken with a Panasonic Lumix. This is a number of years ago. Uh, there was a Henry Moore 
sculpture exhibit in the botanical gardens and I was like a kid in the candy store. It was a definite feast for the eyes and one sculpture was more magnificent than the other. And uh, it was kind of difficult picking a shot to submit. It was like choosing among, amongst your children. So uh, yeah, it's uh, called Knife Edge. Is that right, Steve? That's correct. That's correct. And they, I wish they would do this again. It would. It was. It was a spectacular display. It was definitely an absolute feast for the eyes. Yeah. Thank you. I think this is yours, uh, Chuck. Yeah, uh, Sal. Uh, I've been fortunate enough. I haven't been driving a lot in the uh, at, at night or evening, and. Uh, I had a great chauffeur with me that, that uh, stopped in front of the uh, Yankee Doodle Fair, my wife, and uh, was able to take the shot. Uh, I took several and uh, uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I'm not sure why the, the, car, the carts themselves uh, didn't show some color, but there really wasn't much on. So it was really kind of an unusual picture. Sal, you still have your navigator on the left. It's blocking the photo. It gone? No. Oh. oh, on the left. Yes. Is it gone? No. It's blocking oh. part of Chuck's image. Oh. It's poor seats. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you know what Lightroom is, is like, I'm on full screen. <laughs> And I see, oh, I see full screen. I do not see the navigator. One just went away, the one that was on the right. And the navigator's still on the left. I can't, I, there's nothing I can do. It's there's, there's a left arrow just under the picture. I think if you look up just under the pic, just directly under the picture on the right side, there's a left arrow, I think. If you press that, it, it... I'm going to try something. Let's see. How about going into slideshow view, Sal, would that help? Is that better? Yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah that's fine. OK, I think I know what's happening. OK. Solve the problem. All right. This is um, uh, Mike Gutman, uh, Brookfield, Connecticut, 2021. <laughs> the duty of a true patriot is to protect his country from a tyrannical government. <laughs> Self-service. We were happy to see it in black and white and mostly gray. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is... Uh, Times Square during COVID, and this is Warren, Warren Yan. Nice shot. Yeah, nice shot. This is uh, Reflective Balls by Jane Malikoff. Jane, are you on by any chance? I'd like to say something about this if the uh, photographer is not present. Um, I related to that greatly because that is a Kusama uh, sculpture, cube sculpture. And um, what you see behind me online today is another one of her works, which are all mirrors if you haven't been in one of these cubes. Um, there are multiple um, uh, mirrors and they reflect these images throughout. You feel like you're in a galaxy. I think she did a lovely job. Yeah, you can barely see uh, figures here and over here, I think, yeah. And this is um, Bumper Car Delight. Bert Stutman. Bert, are you on? Uh, this is Corn on the Cob. 
also by Bert Stutman. And Salvation Army, Bert Stutman. And this is Seize the Day by Bert Stutman. And then Need a Spare, which is, is uh, number one, first place, by Karen Weingarten. And then Through the Car Wash, we've discussed this one. This is Diversity by June Whitaker. June, you are on, right? Still? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> yep. Yes, I came across this in uh, Philadelphia um, next to a barn on a table out in <laughs> the country. And it just caught my eye with all the uh, paint cans and all the paint colors. And yeah. I thought it was a very interesting uh, composition. Now, did you take this with a, a, a digital single lens reflex or a iPhone? iPhone. A lot of these are iPhone photos. Okay. Next is landscape. Once again, Sal, you have the navigator on the left. All right, still? Yes, still there. Still there. There you go. There you go. You cleared it. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is this is yours, Chuck. COVID leaving New York City? Question mark. Question mark. What were you thinking here? Unmute yourself, Chuck. Chuck, you're muted. Chuck, we can't. There Sal, you go. Yeah. I, I, okay, now? Yep. Yes. Yeah. When we were down, Sal, in New York uh, about three or four years ago, we, would get, we came down to Dumbo in that area and took some shots toward Manhattan, most of them. But uh, uh, the, the shot that I put in last year when this, the COVID was really just starting was, was kind of a, it was a, a noisy picture, actually, if you were to look at it and uh, not very good, but it was kind of said that said what uh, COVID coming in was just kind of ominous. And uh, this year, uh, again, I think this is the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, they uh, was out of that same group with uh, the, 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 wind, the way the clouds were blowing and are caught in the wind. It kind of, I titled it, you know, with COVID leaving New York with a couple of question marks, just because of the direction and flow of the clouds. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's like an apparition in here, right here. Yeah. Uh, this is at Warren Yon's Autumn in Connecticut. I'm pretty sure. I think I know where that is. Uh, this is Foggy Day at Noank, Jane Malakoff. It's a lovely spot, isn't it? This is one of mine. This is uh, Dandelions Under Dark Sky. We spend a lot of time in the summer uh, in New Hampshire. This is New Hampshire. All this land is under conservancy now. It's not going to change. 
And this is Jean Pierre's uh, Sunrise Over Saugatuck. We've talked about that. And we've talked about this one. Uh, this is the loner. Ed, this is yours. Is Ed muted? That looks like it's Bering Hill near Bering Hill Beach, right? And this is up in the air, Karen Weingarten. Silver Africa. That's quite a shot. So those are the uh, landscape photos. Nature. Is that full, guys? No. This, this is Greg, Greg Battersby, Birds in Flight. Again, your navigator screen is on the left. You're, you're on the left? That better? No. Yeah. You had it. Uh, you had it off. You had it. You had it before. Slide your cursor off the screen, maybe, uh, Sal. So. All right. That slide all the way to the right or the left. The cursor. Is that okay? No. No. <laughs> Can you move the the cursor? Seems to be right on it. So right. I'm moving the cursor across the whole screen here. You might as well, all right. How about using your right or left arrow keys? Will that work? That that just changes the photo. There's no way you can put it in a slideshow presentation? Well, I don't know if I want to do that right now. I'd probably make a mess of it. You know, there's a, there's a way like to the right there you go, the right button, just, but it's coming back Whatever down. you did, it worked. Just then. Oh, it's back. Yeah, now it's There's off. a way in Zoom to, to share a specific window rather than sharing the screen. Is that good enough? Yes. Yeah. You enough. have All it right. now. Yeah, it's good. All right. Enough. Birds in flight. We've talked Bingo. about that one. Uh, this is. Uh, I think this is yours, Hal. Hal. That was in the same place as the other photograph. Wildflowers, yeah, and insects in the field, right? It's in the field, and you can see it's 195 millimeters. So the image that you're seeing is very far away from me. And what I liked about the picture was the way the three the three flowers, the three sets of flowers, were on an angle, pointing in one direction towards the insect. I right. thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah it's neat. And this is Michael Hamburger. We've talked about that one. Nice one. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is uh, Enchanted Forest. This is yours, Michael, right? Yes. There, there's a piece of forest around the lake where the, um, the ground is quite wet. So the trees look different. I see, you see it's a lot of moss and it's, um, the colors are different. Because on the other side of the lake, it's all um, kind of dry, uh, tall trees, but this is different. So you, when you're you're sinking in when you walk there. Yeah, this this is a mushroom here, right? Yes. Hmm. It's, be, it's because it's because you told us that you always need something red in the foreground. I know that's what that's what I read. That's for sure, right? <laughs> All right. This is uh, Warren's. This is Borage Bloom. That's interesting. What's the plan? It's not. It's not. It's not right. It should be the bloom. The bloom thing should be at the top of the picture. Vertical. It's, it's turned on a side. Oh. Yeah. 
and the and what you're looking at, I I can tell you that this is a this is micro photography. He, yeah. he special. This this is not. Is that... It's not a regular photo. That's yeah, beautiful. It's it's macro. This okay. is called Fall Flower. This is Terry Klein. Terry, are you on by any chance? No. Um. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, I took it at night with a flash, <laughs> so just outside my house. Wow, it looks like daylight. I thought it was interesting with a dark background. Are these strawberries? Uh, they're little berries. Yeah. <laughs> berries. It's the fruit of a uh, uh, Korean dogwood in the background. Mm. Uh, and this is a basketball tree, Jane Malakoff. And we've discussed this. This, this is uh, dew on leaf. Yeah. <clears throat> this is fallen tree, Karen Weingarten. We have plenty of those around here. Mm -hmm. And this is, I believe, bent, but not broken. Jane, June? Yes. <laughs> yes, it, the, this uh, tree intrigued me. Um, it was taken at Waveney, and I've made several trips there to see it in different uh, seasons. <laughs> and um, I just like the tree, and I it uh, it talked to me, <laughs> bent yeah. but not broken. Yes. <laughs> I imagine a lot of people sit there. We like that very much, June. Oh, thank Especially you. Especially because it focuses your eye through the tree branches into the distance. Very nice concept. Thank you. Yep. Uh, this is snowdrops. Linda Woodruff. Are you on, Linda? Wow. And this is Tree Roots Glacier National Park, Montana, Linda Woodruff. And that's the group for nature. And here are the portraits. This is Hear the Beat. We've discussed this. We've discussed this. This is Best in Show. Uh, this is COVID-19 concentration. That's my grandson. <laughs> Michael, this is yours. Yeah, those are two of uh, my two granddaughters. So it's and a they, it's a, a fifteen year old holding a three year old, and you see the reflection in the back. This was in Sweden in summer. Yeah. Excuse and me, Sal. Yes. Sal, um, I see Michael Guffman's on, so maybe you want to ask about his picture that one best in show. Oh sure. So let me get through all the portraits here, and I'll go back to his. Okay. And this is. Portrait. This is enlightenment, Michael, right? Yeah, this is my. This is just a, a snapshot in a, in a in a coffee bar, and I thought she had a very nice smile there. Mm -hmm. My, it's my granddaughter. He looks just like you, Michael. Yeah, it's amazing how. Doesn't um, have a beard though. <laughs> And uh, Jean-Pierre, this is Imagine. Yes, this is at the uh, Van Gogh Immersion Exhibit in New York um, back in August. And uh, if anybody has been there, um, you'll recognize this. It's basically you, you get immersed into Van Gogh's pictures and you're in a cube and basically the image is all around you. And my wife is looking at it. Of course, it's COVID. So, and uh, this is one of the famous uh, paintings of Van Gogh. Amazing, 
amazing show. Did you enjoy the show, Michael? I mean, uh, JP? Oh yeah, it was fantastic. Yes. And it was, uh, it was uh, on the, the place on the, on the west side, which is better than the one on the east side. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay, this is uh, one of mine. This is, I call this Autumn Joy. Mm -hmm. Three people enjoying the autumn in New Hampshire. And this is Terry Klein's picture, Eli. It's my, um, it's my grandson, and this is his 16th birthday, and he's just learning the guitar. Yeah. I, it would have been much better if I could have cropped out the background, but I wasn't sure how to do it. So, Michael, thanks for joining yes. us. Well, when I was able to get back in time. Yeah. Uh, this this is best in show. Oh, thank you. Okay. And, so this uh, is uh, this was taken in April of 2020, just when people were beginning to come out of the house and trying to get together uh, outside uh, after that winter of COVID. And we were out, and uh, it was great. We were sitting around mess, but everybody wanted to hug each other uh, to, to actually touch. So my daughter set up a uh, sheet on the clothesline, plastic sheet. And that's my son and my grandson, the uncle and nephew, uh, wrapped in this sheet, hugging each other, uh, uh, finally, after months of not really even seeing each other. Uh, very impactful and, and very timely looking. Uh, Captures the moment. It's uh, of, uh, of uh, all the pictures I've taken, for me, this is the most emotional of all the pictures. Uh, uh, really, for me, it personally resonates. Yeah. Terrific. Michael, Mike, you can lose, use this in the years ahead under the title, Love Can Be Suffocating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> okay, Waterscape, which is the largest category, actually. Huh. Oh, Let me break. All right. This this is um, give me a moment. This is Boat in the Mist, Greg Battersby. Quite a, a shot with that wave. Holly, is this yours? Uh, that is mine. That is, um, I was in Central mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I got to New York in over a year. And I was just walking around the city and it was raining. And um, this just looked like a good picture. Raining morning in Cent Central Park. Holly, that's a wonderful composition. And is that your dog or is no, that? No, no, that's somebody. I have no idea who that was. She was just sitting there with her dog. Uh, reading the paper. Picture makes it. You know, the, the mm -hmm. person mm -hmm. makes it. Yeah. Very nice. Nice composition. nice composition. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I think this is yours, Steve. This is um, Branch Reflection. Yes. Uh, it's taken a number of years ago when Helen and I were visiting our daughter in Seattle. And uh, again, taken with my Pan Panasonic Lumix. And it was just touched by the incredible stillness of the yeah. picture and of course the reflection and uh it's uh, I, I was very much taken by the shot That's so amazing. and we've discussed this one neil yes or this steve this is your steve that's, so. yeah that's mine yep okay this is um uh, I'm having trouble with this one. It's Bob Fox's. Oh, this is Follow the Light, Bob Fox. Yep. Mike, this is yours. 
Yeah, this, uh, I must have sent you a low res picture. It's actually a lot sharper than this. This was, uh, when I took it, it struck me that it was a bit like a Japanese block print. Uh, and I was trying to get that effect of, uh, of something looking like a Japanese print. And this is snow and fog, right? Yep. And Dick, this is one of yours. Yeah, I took this in, um, in Mexico. This is the Sea of Cortez. And I took it some years ago. I used a Sony, uh, I used a, an early Sony DSLR. And I just, uh, I just kept shooting until I got that one second that you can't duplicate. And it just, uh, the composition was there and uh, it came out beautifully. I'm always, uh, I've got it, I, I canvassed it and I've got it hanging in the house. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice, so it comes across very nice, nice and sharp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it is. And this one is actually a sunrise also in Mexico. And it was, uh, I just was taken by the reflection all the way back to me. And uh, again, a very easy composition, but it just came out feeling very, very, very good. I felt very good about it. Yeah, this is the Holy Land sunset. Yep. Mm. Oh, you know what? That's the wrong photo. <laughs> That's actually a sunrise. Oh, I screwed up. And then this. Okay, uh, this one, all right, is? This is a uh, compo. In fact, Steve uh, Rothenberg, I, I'm trying to remember if maybe we were uh, together the night when you took your photo and I took mine, but I was pointing in the other direction earlier in the evening. I'm not sure, but this Perfect. is just, this is an iPhone shot. It was there and uh, I did a little touching up, but I felt that it captured uh, a lot of the, um, a lot of the feeling that you get when you come to the beach. Yeah. Crisp. You know, the picture is very crisp. Yeah. Yeah, isn't that what we're saying? So crazy. Yeah. Colors are great. And then this one is, uh, I was at Niagara Falls and uh, I was actually thinking about editing out the railing on the very lower left, but I decided mm -hmm. that it was where I was. Uh, if I had edited it out, then might have, the impression might have been that I was standing in the falls, which is, uh, was mm -hmm. untrue. But uh, I just, again, felt that the clarity of it came through very well, as well as the energy of it. Yep. Dave, does this, having something like that and it gives it some scale, the falls? Uh, yes, if you go back, um, I think there's um, a lot to be said, first of all, for the color in the falls, the Green. water. It's um, uh, very crystal clear and interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind the uh, fence on the left in that it sort of balances, brings your, your mm -hmm. eye to the cliff on the right in the distance. Mm -hmm. There's a certain balance of composition here. Mm -hmm. It works. Um, I so uh, I certainly Dick agree um, uh, with Dick on how that was determined. Yeah, I, I, it's one of my favorites. And it was one of my favorite moments. I was with my daughter and we were, uh, gonna go. Uh, we eventually went to the Baseball Hall of Fame on the same trip, but this was just just a great moment. Well, the fence you, almost you know, has an arch shape that looks like the waterfalls. You know, it's interesting. The next is "River of Roses" by Jane Malakoff. Perfect. She, she caught the the roses in the air as well. Fantastic. And we've discussed this one, Jean-Pierre, and this one. I think this is one of yours, Ed, deserted. Ed Simic. You still with us? I wonder where that is. I guess he's not on. I don't know where that is. I think that's Westport, actually. Yeah. That was that abandoned sailboat that beached. And we've talked about this one. Uh, 
Uh, and this is uh, Linda Woodruff, Lake McDonald, Glacier National Park, Montana. And that's it. We've gotten gone through all of them, I think. Let's see, did we have one more? No, we went through Waterscape. We've done them all. Okay. So <coughs> I'd like to, to mention that um, we're gonna we're scheduling a Zoom discussion of the photographs for November 16th at 9:30. Um, hopefully we'll be led by uh, Dave Pressler and Ted Horowitz. So uh, as photographers, we can go through these and talk about them, uh, discuss um, the photos a little bit more. Uh, we'll, we'll send out invitations to the Wise Men and Senior Center members. And that's November 16th at 9.30, a Zoom. Sal, do you want to show um, Ted Horowitz's photo and... <clears throat> And uh, uh, yes, let's see. Good. Thanks for reminding me. <clears throat> Share screen again. Uh, this is Bernie Perry. Bernie, are you on the line? Thought you were here for a while. This is also Bernie Perry. I want to make a comment about these. These I spoke to Bernie about these photos. Uh, they were they were provided to us with the wrong format, and they do not fit in the frames we have. So I I, I want to point out that when photos are given to us. They, they have to fit in a 16 by 20 frame. And they need to fill the frame in such a way that the mat is, is either uh, properly fills in all around the photo or the photo has to be complete and not need a mat. And these, and Bernie's two pictures didn't meet that. He's gonna come back from the show that he's attending down in uh, Florida. And he's gonna take the two pictures and fix that. But you have to remember, we're very limited because all of the frames are the same. They're 16 by 20, and the you have to have photographs which look proper within those frames. Right. It's, spe it's spelled out in great detail in the rules that we've sent yeah. out to everybody. And I did not put up uh, Dave Pressler's pictures are not there yet because there were no open spaces where, where I didn't have to remove the very difficult uh, labeling that was on the photographs, I, on, uh, on the existing photographs. So I have to take down some pictures and put his new prints up. That'll be done this week. Yeah. Or rather Dave, next week. Dave, is this your mother-in-law? No, this is the uh, masked <laughs> queen at Halloween. The masked <laughs> queen on Halloween. Actually, this is a full-size human figure cut out on cardboard in the window of a shop uh, in New Haven and uh, right across the street from Yale Art Gallery. And it just caught my eye and I thought it was humorous but had a, a good message. So since she had it covered, I thought I'd have her covered too. Nice. This is a photograph I took uh, last month up in Sandwich, Massachusetts at the Sandwich Glass Museum. Ooh. And it was a highly unusual exhibition by a nephew of the late actress Audrey, I'm sorry, um, let's see, Catherine Hepburn. Ooh. This fellow's name is Mundy Hepburn. And what's unique about his glass sculptures, he fills them with gas, different types of gas, and charges them electrically. So mm -hmm. they move in different ways and light up in different colors. What's to the view? That was about five feet high. 
It looks like to me like a a snail. Uh, yeah. it is, it's a glass snail. That's what it's called. And this I thought I would share with everyone. This is uh, inside the Bangkok airport <laughs> in Thailand. Wow. I thought architecturally, it surpasses any of the United States airports. Mm. That's really, that's something. 97. How'd you get hey, a Sal, to Sal? Yeah. What time were you there in the mornings? <laughs> yes. Uh, it's probably 2 a.m. because otherwise there'd be a million people. Sal, can I ask a favor? Um, I'd like to show the picture that I should have entered under that screenshot of the sunset in the Holy Land. Is that possible? Um, I, I think so. Let's get through these and then oh, sure. we'll, we'll see if uh, Jason can set you up. Yeah, I just have to make me a co-host and I'll screen share it when the time comes. Okay. Well, that's Steve's. That's Steve's. Where's my fourth one? <laughs> Good question. I've only got six here. I don't know where it is, David. Sorry. No, wait, four of them are, are Dave's. If you have six pictures, four of them are Dave's, two of them Bernie. are Bernie's. Bernie. That's it. Okay. Uh, I, uh, Jason, can you share? Is it Steve? So you have yours ready to go? Whoever wanted uh, to share, yeah. I, I, I do, I have a single okay, shot. Go ahead. You should so, be able to share screen. You uh, I should, those. okay, well, let me see because I don't know if I have to be a, um, oh, I, I shall try it. Okay, can you see that? No, Dick, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is the sun, this is the sunset over the Holy Land. Uh, and um, I was in Tel Aviv at the time and I was uh, facing Egypt. I had, this is a Sony DSLR. And I looked at that and I said, you only get this one time. And um, that was the one that I actually, the other one that was truly a sunrise. But this is, if this isn't ethereal, nothing is. So I just, I just, that was the one I really wanted to share with you. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. I'll enter it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Next year. <laughs> yeah, I'll just have to rename it something like Sunrise Over Mexico or something. <laughs> right. Beautiful shot, Dave. Thank you, thank you. It's okay. That that ends our show. Uh, hope everyone enjoyed it. It was a little.